Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first in a series of what we're calling the Plus Three Futures and Commodities Educational Series. Uh, we talk about on our weekly videos and our monthly videos, we talk about levels and squares. And um, what we're going to do on this video is show you how we use the squares to actually trade uh, and create an edge and how uh, you may be able to incorporate these levels and these squares into your own trading to create an edge. Um, as always, I'm, I'm joined by my partner, Barry Hederachi. How are you, Barry? Doing pretty well. <laughs> Ready to teach? Class is in session? I think so. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, it's so a needed aspect. You know, it's one, you know, it's one thing to present levels and squares and what we think. It's another thing to help people understand you know, how they can incorporate it. Absolutely. I think we've been, you and I have been talking offline about doing this for a while. And, and now is a, is a really good time because I, I feel like the the, the levels and the, the things that we show on our weekly videos are super important in this type of market we're in now. And um, it's just, it's becoming more valuable. So knowing how to use them will really help people. Right. The first chart we want to show, we're going to do all ES today, and uh, this is going to be quick. We're going to run through some, some, uh, the geometry of you know wh why we want these spots and why we trade at these spots, as well as some market structure Barry's going to cover. This is a, a chart I post on Twitter almost every day. This is the ES sixty minute ping pong chart. I call it. You know, this this is my my ping pong table, if you will. Uh, the example here we're showing here's an upper limit at this spot, the lower limit of the table at this spot, and then the net which is the middle of the table right here. Uh, the, the main thing to, that I try and you know, impart to people when I post this is it gives you levels where probability tells you one thing if you get the proper price action. And that's really important. Probabilities tell you that one thing's more likely to happen than another. Uh, and a perfect example is you know, this move down cleared this level here, came through it, and then came back and tested it and could not get above that level. When that happens, you have a high probability that you're going to see a move, in this case, lower. And in this case, we got a full square move from, from this level here all the way down to the, to the lower level. Now, the reason that the setup was good is we came through the level, went back up and tested it, and as you can see, failed. Sort of the classic way we use the squares, right, Perry? That's right. I mean, there are a lot of ways to use it, but this is a very practical, practical way. And and the one of the key things, and Barry will show it to you when he when he goes his charts, is I use what's called static squares, which means I find a harmonic point that I feel as a good vibration, set the square to that point and leave the square there and then let it play out over time. Uh, you do make minor adjustments, but by and large, uh, my squares are generally static. I set them and then let them play out. Um, Barry uses more of a dynamic square where he'll change the, the, the set point over time based on price action. And, and he's going to review how he does that. So, um, but one of the key things that, that this does, if you look over here in the black section of this chart where there is no square, you can see there's zero reference points here. Yeah, there's 4,700, 4,750, 4,800, you know, the margins and the scale on the, of the price there. But there's no levels. There's no places where you have markers. The purpose that I use these squares for is to create this grid so that I know where there are really significant and important spots that we watch price action closely and see how price reacts around the line. Because if it does certain things, you're going to have an edge and you're going to have a higher probability of price moving one way or another. Uh, like this sort of move here where we saw we went through the, through the square came back up and tested it and failed. 
And as you see, you can look, there's, you know, there's, there's examples of, you know, where price will get through, clear, hold, clear, hold, back up to the half square, right? And, and mainly, uh, it, Barry talks about this a lot on the weekly videos. You want to look at sort of level to level trading. There's three reference points in a square, right? There's the top of the square. There's the middle of the square, the half square as we call it. And then there's the bottom of the square. And so level to level means you're going from top to middle, then to bottom. And then if you can't hold, you're generally going to check the middle, bottom, top, and then bounce. So there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it. What we're trying to do is show you some of the ways we do it. Uh, let me throw it back over to you, Barry, and then you can uh, run through how, how you use the dynamic squares. Chart looks daunting when there's nothing on it, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. it uh, you know, there's a certain quality to that, right? Yeah, um, true. You just get, when you're used to seeing the squares and having the grid, it really helps you frame the price action. Here, it's uh, it's a little more open open season. Mm -hmm. And that you know, and the reason I wanted to start there is, you know, when you if you're going to use squares, these are sort of like you know, you can think of them as templates or overlays to isolate price action. You know, you have to you have to be working with the knowledge of market structure. You should have a decent understanding of how price moves. And, and price action, how all that works in the background. And, you know, like we've um, talked about this for years, you know, about new people having to, uh, the benefits of starting with a blank chart and, and just trend lines to start with. So they learn how prices move and, and, and the different phases of a market and so on before they get into, you know, adding 15 indicators on their chart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just want to touch on it. You know, we can talk about market structure for a week, but we don't have that kind of time. So we'll just to quickly, what we mean about market structure is we want to see, we want to be able to isolate how the market moves naturally on its own. And there are, there are certain ways, you know, markets, you know, basically can only really do three things. It, it goes up, it, it consolidates, it goes sideways, and uh, then it can go down. Now, the and you can take one part of that and break it down further. You can say a down uh, up move could be a very strong move, or it could be a very sort of a sloppy move. Um, so there's different ways to characterize all of those. You know the three basic phases. Like I said, this is not an entire course on it, but this is a sort of a uh, quick brushing up, just so you guys know how the overlaying of the squares would work within that realm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, Ben? Yep. Yep. All right. So just a quick thing of how we look at market structure in a very rough way would be, uh, let's just take this low we have here. So the market's going down, we have a low. And how do we know when the trend changes, right? So the classic way is to, you look for their up move, the first pullback, which is here. And then you look for the point when the market takes out the prior high. And I better probably zoom in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're talking about, so how do we know when the trend starts? Let's just start with that. We have a market coming down, makes a low. And how do we know it's a low? Well, when the high of the low bar gets taken out, then that becomes a low temporarily. And how do we know the trend changed? Well, we wait for the first pullback which would be here in this case, to take out the prior high, which would be here. So it's basically an A, B, C, D, right? A, mm -hmm. B, C, and the D would be somewhere up here. So as soon as this high gets taken out, we know market is, has changed its trend and is trending higher. And con you can continue to look at the market like that. If it's making continually making higher lows, well, clearly, there's pressure, people are buying up the low, uh, you know, buying up all the selling and, and they're moving higher and higher and they're willing to pay more and more. And of course, the other one is to look at higher highs, uh, which means they're pushing higher and higher and, and buying up whatever they have to sell. Now, that said, then you have to get, get to the nitty gritty of how what happens when markets get stuck in a range. 
But what I do is this is a really quick um, overview. As soon as we make a new high, I try to draw a horizontal line on it, or at least visualize it. And then you take the prior low to that, let's say this one, and you draw a parallel line to that. So that boxes the range if we decide not to go any higher. So let's say I did that here. We went lower and started going higher, took out the high. So then I would make this the next the new low for the bracket. So we have, so this is the block I'm working with. And we made a new high. So I put my horizontal line there. Came back, made a higher low, went back, made a lower high. Okay, now we have a we're, we're, we have a higher low and a lower high. So we're squeezing, right? We're compressing. Then I would move my bracket to the lower, the higher low and the lower high. So long as we're operating within that, we're kind of going sideways because our definition is higher highs and higher lows for trending. So when does it start trending again? Well, you watch this area market. Let's say, you know, we, we've been bracketing it from here, came up and we're at this point. Sold off, sort of a false break on this low, reverse immediately that day, right? Next day, tight range getting ready to break out to one side or the other, and we broke to the upside. Now we're at the upper bounds. So the structure is, you know, we have resistance up here because we held it twice. And here we mess around for a few bars and we break out. So that as soon as we break out, we're making, so we had a low, higher high, higher low, and we take this out. Now we're trending again. So from this point, we're trending again, right? So I would put, bracket that as the low and I would go, you know, I would follow this line all the way up until we reverse, which we did, you know, on the third bar or the second bar. And now we're coming down. So as long as we're making higher highs and higher lows, I look at it as trending. And as soon as we reverse, in this case, the definition would be where the low of the high bar gets, high bar gets taken out right, which would be right about here. The trend changes, then you're looking to see, is it range bound or is it a downtrend? So for this to turn into a downtrend at this point, I would look for an ABC at least, right? A, B, C, and I would expect D to take this out. That would turn the market to the downside. Otherwise, we're just make, continue to make higher lows and the trend is, trend is up. The overall trend is up. If you wanna look at the lens uh, through that type of a lens, and the intermediate term range is sideways because it's between these two points. And once this low gets uh, low comes in and we reverse, we move up our little horizontal bar. So we bracket this box here just to make it a little bit more easy to see. So once you bracket that way over here, right in June. You're inside that. Now you know technically you're, you're sideways. So you know the condi conditions are prone to be choppy rather than trending. So you have to have that as one of the filters in your mind when you're looking at the squares and everything else. So this is sideways. But what's happening within the sideways, right? We see the market making higher lows. Low, higher low, another higher low, higher low, right? Higher low. And we hold that on a couple of tests. And remember that line we drew up here at the top of the box up here, where did we come up? We came right up to it, consolidated a few days, broke out, couldn't really hold, right? When we say hold, it means like this bar, it needs to hold. And the next bar clearly needs to be, have a low higher than the bar that held. And in this case, we didn't, we reversed, but we're, you know, we're drawing these lines on every, every uh, pullback. So here we held, which is very bullish, came up. All this messing around here, you know, trying to get people short, you know, get it on cross-legged. But if you just draw a line, you know where things are, right? So the market held, higher low, higher low, and eventually broke out through this, through the box. 
we're, right? We're pushing, pushing, and pushing. Now, at this point, we know the probability of it going higher is much greater than it's selling off. So we have a, you know, we, we broke out to the upside, we consolidated here. We're looking at this point, we're expecting it to break to the upside. And why is that? Because we've been making higher lows all the way from the, uh, the swing low back in early June. And then again, we go back to our default, which is higher lows and higher highs. And here we go, we're trending. And we reverse the thing if the market is going down. So that's the five second elevator pitch of how we look at structure, right? Very basic. And I think everybody should really know that before they start. Yeah, you, have, you have to know that for sure. Yeah, without knowing that, it doesn't matter if you're using squares or, you know, um, moving averages or indicators or what magic cubes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. None of it really matters unless you really study how the market is moving. So anyway, that's, that's the basis we go off of, or that's the base that's always working in the background, right? That's the background of the squares. Now the squares, what the squares help us do is to sort of isolate different market phases, phase of the market. And, and, and all these markets have different, uh, phases and these phases have patterns, you know, when they begin, when they end, uh, when are they prone to accelerate? And uh, so we have to look at all of that. And to do that, we have squares and there are some regular, I mean, if you guys are again, um, students, you already know, there are some, you know, a few basic general squares that work uh, well in most any market. So there's a square of 72 and there's a square of 90. Those are the two main ones that I use. <clears throat> and the squares that Ben used, they're normally some harmonic of these, these two main squares. And that's, just, mm -hmm. and that's just how it is. So here's a, you know, a square of 72, we put, lay it on here. So one thing we, I mean, the easiest thing to see is we see the market go, you know, we talked about structure earlier, so I'm not going to touch on that, but let's just say, look at a practical view of, you know, what happened in this area. So the market makes a high, <clears throat> And how do we know it's a high? Well, as soon as the low of the high bar gets taken out, okay? So there's a high, we take it out, we go lower and gets close to 72 and we bounce. So on this bounce, we're looking to see if the bounce can hold above the half square or not. So when it's coming down, when it goes through the square, I mean, this is a point where you can initiate a trade to the downside if that's, that's what you're seeing. And... At a square, normally it's a place where you would cover if you're short. And if it gets through the square, you can think of it as where you would add a position uh, if you're looking to go short. And if it holds and it bounces, you know, depending on the overall structure, that's the place you can get in for the next phase, next leg. And it could be a, a counter trend or it could be a new, new leg altogether. So the way you can differentiate between them is by looking at the, the the character of the leg that just finished it. So here we have a, anyway, we're not getting too, too much into that, uh, staying at the level that we want to cover this in order for you guys to um, be able to use these levels that we talk about weekly in, in a practical way. So we have a market coming down, bounces up, the counter trend goes right after the half square. We're looking for this to hold and just peeking around it is not holding. This is very weak, right? And if it starts to go lower and you can, like what, what Ben does, you can always look to the lower time frame. So this is a daily. You can look at a four hour, you can look at a 30 minute, one hour to see if you're getting any indication of, you know, of a, of a cell setup there. So it's important to have setups where you can trust, you know, when this gets triggered, you know, I buy, if this gets triggered, I sell. Because these can't be done on the fly, just mentally about how you feel, or if you, depending on how much sugar you have in the system. So it has to be <laughs> right, right, Ben. Or caffeine, right? Or caffeine, exactly. So these have to be. You have to have systems in place that trigger, you know, your buys and sells. And and if you have a system, you should have anything. It could be anything. It could be trend lines. It could be. Moving averages, whatever you want. Moving right? averages, dare I say RSI, whatever, right? Whatever that works for <laughs> right? you. Right. Whatever that works for you. And you trust it. You know the, the probabilities of the system. You know your edge. 
Well, these, la these numbers that we talk about can be incorporated into pretty much any system because they're just, they're just levels. They're so rock we, solid levels, that's right. They're, they're rock solid levels and, and, and you can use your own systems and methods and, you know, and they can be as simple as a, a trend line, uh, try to get you into the whatever trade that you're looking to benefit from. So in this case, we have a pullback, goes to the half square. The, when it goes to the half square, looking for it to see if it's going to hold, are we going through? And you can look to lower time frame to see which way. So in this case, looks like we're turning down, you know, first day, inside day, inside day, and it gets weak. Usually, you know, it, it's going to head lower. And the fact that we stopped here for three days, they couldn't get above it, is giving you some feedback, right? That's telling you that the system is weak. And Also, uh, Barry, the, key, the other key thing about that spot that you and I always talk about is mm -hmm. we don't know what's going to happen, but we know we can be, we can identify whether we're wrong super quickly with small risk. Exactly. And that's the other thing. So, and we'll cover that in a minute. So, we, 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 so we're expecting this to be resistance. Okay, it's resistance. We go lower, sell off. And the next point is to see 72. And the first drive was here. We didn't quite get to 72. And if we're going to, if the half square is not going to hold, if it holds, it's very likely we take out any other prior lows prior to that. So in this case, we took it out and we're looking to 72 to see if it holds there. It doesn't, you know, we're going straight, straight down. And next half square, not even a pause, goes right. 144 degrees down, right? So here, now, when you're down two squares, 140 degrees, that's a, that's a normal sort of a decent square for a market. So we're looking for that to be support. And well, it ends up becoming support because the next day we take out the high of the low bar, right? So we know, hey, it's possible that we have a trend change here. And then eventually we tried to hold up above the half square. Well, here we take out the square and take out the high. So at this point, we know the trend change. We're done with the bear stuff, at least for the moment. Mm -hmm. And for, well, from there we get to the next square. We don't really sell off off of that. We start try to, you know, we're trying to make it higher. And you can notice we're starting to get these higher, higher lows, right? So this is, you know, it's indicating buyers coming in earlier and earlier. And we generally, you can see, you know, it's a little bit of an art to use these squares, just like it's a little bit of an art to use indicators. Well, trading is a bit of an art. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you can see the balance of it is holding above the square versus below the square, right? Mm -hmm. And well, from there, you can see the higher lows. You're expecting it to move higher. So eventually it moves higher. And it's the same story. What we talked about here is what repeats in every square. So once it clears that square, it's the same story. You're looking for it to work itself through that square. So in this case, you can see, I just want to do two squares and be done with it. So mm -hmm. remember earlier, we talked about structure, how I line up the highs and lows. So here we cleared the first square, got into the second square, went up to the 50%. So as soon as it gets up here and reverses, I'm drawing my box, right? And we came down here, draw the box here. And once it starts to hold above, which is right here, very clear. It's perfect. It's now we know, hey, it's a little bit safe to go on the upside, right? No matter how bad the news is. Technically, price is showing that it's, it, it's, it's on a stronger point versus over here. And, and even you here, you know, we couldn't hold it. We started going lower. And, and you could, you know, if your systems are in place, you can trade to the short side. But then you need to know when it's, you know, when it's done clearly. And also shorting, this is a little bit risky. Why? Because we are coming off of this major, you know, we just cleared a huge square. You want to look at the overall structure, see what's happening, right? And the trend right now, main trend is up. So in a main uptrend, you want to watch if you're trading the trend or if you're trading the counter trends. So that's another, that goes into your structure back to structure by getting back to the how to get through the square we, we're holding above the half square and it's again it's making higher lows right higher lows moving higher again higher lows and it clears the old high and here we go everybody jumps on board goes right to the 72 the old high 
And normally, what do we look for here? We're looking for resistance, see if it holds or not. What happens? We get a one day pullback, counter trend, next day back up. The second day, we're above the square and we're moving. So once it clears one a square, you know, the force is to the upside, right? And we continue to go higher. So all through here, if you look at the structure, it's trending higher. And, and these lines give us sort of like markers or um, signposts along that phase. So, you know, if you look at a half square and a full square as, as, a, as sort of a signpost, you can use that to gauge, you know, where are we in, in the bigger picture? So that's how, how we kind of use it in the flow in real time with whatever the market is doing. And these squares, you know, we talked about dynamic squares and static squares. Well, dynamic squares work because once you know what the, sort of the character of the market, you know, how it corrects and how it moves impulses and pullbacks, you can set up a, um, a static square and it'll work just beautifully because you're not just using that. You're also looking at structure, you're looking at momentum, you're looking at everything else. So, but it's a nice template to work with. I think uh, one of the key energy. things, Barry, yeah. one of the key things you said that I want to emphasize is that, you know, go, you go yeah, pull the chart back. When in this bullish phase, mm -hmm. the news was horrible. Right. Horrible. Mm -hmm. And what the squares do is it gives you the squares and the structure is it gives you a way to sort of block out the noise mm -hmm. and trade the actual trend. I mean, because look at this. This is March, April, May, June, July of August of 2020 when, you know, the 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 covid news was out and the markets were crashing. Oil went negative. And look mm -hmm. at the trend and look at price yeah. action. Exactly. And if you had this box drawn off of this first high, everything was okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. Well, and of course, this is hindsight, but that's why we do the uh, weekly weekly show. So we can talk about every week what we're expecting. And we talk about the levels and things. And you guys can go and review them. The best way to review is go back to the older videos and just walk forward. So you can kind of see, you know, sort of like net, Netflix series, right? <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of yeah, you want to look yeah. at it every week to see how the story continues. And then you can catch on and then maybe... Uh, you can see the value of sort of using these things. And, and just to, for the last, uh, just to cap it off. So once we have a, we talked about those brackets, I, how I bracket these things, how we should bracket when we're looking at structure. Um, so if you bracket that, there's one line. And the next thing is you look for the, you know, the following low. low. So first it was a low here, but then we took it out. So then we have a low there. So I'm looking at this. First it was here, went up high. It looks like that 144 was holding. Went up a little high, but couldn't, came back down. Okay, as soon as it starts moving higher, I bracket that. Now we're working the bracket, right? So within the bracket, we sort of, you know, obviously, as soon as we have a high and low in place and the market is within that, it's not trending until one of these gets taken out. So here we have a sideways trend, but the clues are in place, right? We're making a higher low here. That's positive. Took out the square again, positive. Went up to test this, the old highs. Went up to the half square. Yeah. And it did, we didn't sell off. It's tight up against it, which is also bullish. We talk about that a lot on, on the weekly show. And eventually what happens? We got above it. And this is all coming off the low, right? We got above the square. Look how we held above it so mm -hmm. perfectly, right? And if it's holding above, it's bullish. If it's holding below, it's uh, usually bearish. And I'll just use this block because it's easier to see. You can see at the half square, you know, we got above, retest and go, right? That worked out. Hey, Barry, we one, one quick thing here. Back in this section here when we were crossing, crisscrossing the 144, mm -hmm. and you had the, the range defined really well, mm -hmm. the fact that we're crisscrossing this full square also tells you, hey, you're in a chop zone. Exactly. There's nothing to do. Exactly. That's a, really, that's a really good point. If you're, if you're crisscrossing, um, you know, the half square or the full square is definitely not done and it's, it hasn't chosen a side yet. And mm -hmm. once we 
pushed to one side and can hang up there, then that's where it's happening, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, that, that's a good. That's a good point. And so I just want to talk about how just you know what we just talked about, just to consolidate that and then look at what actually market did uh, last couple of years. So you can see here's a half square point. You know we got above, we tested, and it's bullish goes up, right? Here's a full square. Again, we came up, bumped up against this, sold off, corrected, counter trend, again, higher high, came back, ABC down, higher low. How do we know this? Well, once the high of the low bar is taken out, right? Higher low. So right here, we have higher highs and higher lows. So this is, again, bullish. Here we hold above the square and we're bullish. We're going, right? And where's the next stop? It's exactly the next half square. Right here, and again, if you if you box this up, it's easy to see all that was sideways, just like you said. And here's another, and and there, and I'm boxing this high, and the first pullback that that low, and we were all through here, not much direction till we took out, till we were able to hold above it, right? And then we next stop was up here, next square, and. Again, here, we tried to go up there, really couldn't make it, came back down, retest, back down, and cross the line, back on up, test the line, back on up, test the line, now at the half square, and we're going sideways between these two points. So that's a rough guide to how, well, one way, or, or how we look at it, Mm -hmm. and and the way why we think these levels are important and they're useful at least it keeps you on the right side now there are pitfalls to all of this and we were going to talk about that uh and the pitfall would be not knowing how to manage your risk at one of these levels ben do you want to talk about that a little bit I mean, yeah back. i mean the, the one of the main pitfalls i see is that we never know what price is going to do as it's approaching a line. Is right. it going to hold? Is it going to go through? Is it going to chop? We don't know. Right. But we do know that once we see the price action at that line with certain patterns, mm -hmm. we understand where there's an edge for one thing happening over another. Right. So it's not something you can, you can anticipate, although there are, there are some, some systems we use where we, you know, you hit the line, you trade it, but you have to have a tight stop and it's a different sort of approach. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just an, it's something that you have to decide, you know, how do you want to use these levels and how are you going to trade them? How are you going to incorporate them into your work? Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, the main drawback I see is that people want to know, oh, if it comes up and touches this line, then it's going to turn around and go down. It's, we don't know that. Right. It's just the probability, probability of it doing something at those lines. You, you have an edge there. The, there's a higher probability of whatever ha comes off of that line will continue. That's the idea, right? That's right. So like here, we're, we're coming up, pulled back to the line. And if we reverse here, the, the probability of continuing higher is much higher than, let's say, on this day where we got under the line. And, you know, I wouldn't look to buy it right here below the line mm -mm. because we're under it, right? We came up, banged up against it, couldn't really keep up above. So we're going to have a correction. Now, if we don't go all the way to bottom to the other square, you know, at least a half square, and we try to come up and take out that high, well, we're probably going to go higher. So yep. that's just basic structure, market mechanics, right? So, so once you understand how that part works, that's why we kept, you know, we wanted to cover that first. Then... The levels just become sort of a uh, you know markers on the on the on the road. Important spots where you can, based on the structure, create an edge for yourself. Yes, that's a good way to good way to say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good way to put it. Mm -hmm. um, well, we can probably do another one about you know how to deal with if the market is you know, the, the, the smaller percentage of time when it, the price action does something other than what's normal, other than what's sure. 
what's highly probable, right? That's and I, th I think like we're at a good spot to end this video. And, and, you know, when, for people that watch it and enjoy it, you know, make a comment and suggest other, you know, educational videos that you'd like to see. Or and if we'll, you have any questions, right? Yeah. And we'll try and incorporate those into, you know, future videos explaining, you know, about how we use the tools that we use. Anyway, I think it was a good one. I hope, uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. And, uh, hopefully, as I said, this is a first in a series of these uh, educational videos that can help you, you know, incorporate some of the things that we're showing into your own trading. Very good. All right, Barry, take care and we'll, uh, we'll talk soon.